in the room. How's your Cinema 309 this week? Anyone go? <laughs> wow. I'm not even here for the comedy show. I was just walking walking in town, walked by, and what do I see in the window? A rainbow dildo bong. <laughs> love it. How's the dildo bong sales here, Bob? Selling them? It's Pride Month. What do you think? Yeah, I love dildo bongs. It's great. I like it. It's like a dual purpose fun time, you know? I do know. You, you got the, the gay agenda converts your kids. And then they get high as well. <laughs> That's cool. Dildo bongs, huh? We were using it the other day, honey, right? I thought you just blowing smoke up my ass. <laughs> How about it, man? I'm still scraping res out of her cut. <laughs> yeah, around the back, I'm smoking crack. <laughs> You know about crack? Anyone ever smoked crack? Woo! Woo! I smoked it twice, I did. But you know, you gotta smell it before you taste it. <laughs> <laughs> that works for more than one kind of crack. Think you don't approve of that message, do you? No, oh, that's... That's okay with you? Do what you do. Dick bongs. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's Gay Pride Month, huh? Any uh, in-the-closet homosexuals in the room? <laughs> <laughs> Any? You never get a straight answer. Yo, oh, you look like you know what's going on. That arm's going up. <laughs> or you just have Nazi Tourette's. <laughs> <laughs> like, Grandpa, put that down! Pour it over! <laughs> the dildo bong. I hit the dildo bong so hard, I, I queefed out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know these things. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, Katrina and I just went to the beach. You guys like the beach? Woo! Okay, okay, we like the beach too. We went. I uh, I like shoplifting. It's a thing I do. I feel <laughs> I feel entitled because I'm poor. But it, like, it's like it's like expensive cheese from a corporate place. It's like that's going to a good home. <laughs> Some yuppie with fine wine. You just gotta let that cheese sit in the shelf and like I'm just gonna like. I leave it open out on the counter. It's like air freshener for my, for my apartment. It's like not just cheese I eat, it's cheese I smell. You know what I mean? She tries to take credit for it. You know, that's, that provolone's coming from me, baby. Like, no, that provolone's from the giant. Yeah. yeah. But enough about cheese. When I was talking about hermit crabs, we know this, right? Too soon? <laughs> I can get away with hermit crab jokes because some of my best friends are hermit crabs. <laughs> I went past the boardwalk and they got these, what do they call them, Eastern European guys barely watching the store and there's hermit crabs galore, some are dead, some are floating. I'm like, I gotta take one of these fucking things home, you know? They're gonna go to some dumb little tourist kid who's gonna forget about it in a week and I, I feel like the Oscar Schindler of hermit crabs. <laughs> I could have done so much more. <laughs> So I get a hermit crab, and I'm acting like, oh, look, honey, they have seedlings here. And I'm like pointing at things, and I put it in my pocket. It's latching on to my wallet. And it's digging in my wallet as I'm walking, you know? <laughs> and I'm just, like, trying to shove it so it doesn't pinch my balls. <laughs> and the, the, it, you can tell it's chomping down on a penny because that's the only thing I keep in my wallets, you know? My lucky penny. <laughs> I'm at the urinal. That's a lucky one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm walking around, and things pinching me and crawling around in my pocket. I'm trying to play it cool. And I'm like, this hermit crab's going to be lonely once we get home, so I've got to get another hermit crab. It's like an addiction to him. <laughs> That's why God gave you two pockets, kids. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to walk, so you're going to throw up your balance walk with one hermit crab the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you see a guy walking down the street like this, you know, <laughs> you think that's swag? No, that guy was stealing hermit crabs <laughs> one at a time. That shift because that thing's gonna pinch his nuts. <laughs> so I make it to the next stand where they're selling more hermit crabs, barely neglected by some what do they call them? Eastern Europeans? <laughs> I don't know. I think he was Nepalese. I made that one up. I just was going to. It was a Nepalese guy. <laughs> I can get away with that joke if some of my best friends are Nepalese tourist trap souvenir hermit crab shop uh, retailers. <laughs> I bet you can't say some of my best friends are Nepalese hermit crab tourist trap shop retailers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm progressive. You're welcome. So I go to the next, don't I, honey? I go to the next place and I get a, she, she hates where this story goes because it's true. She fucking hates it. She hates it. By the way, this is the most amount of people I've ever seen in the basement consensually. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yourselves. <laughs> so, honey, what do we do? We go over to the hermit crabs, right? We go over to the next place, and this Nepalese guy's watching something on the news in Nepalese. 
I'm looking at the hermit crabs and I get another one. And you know, we were having a three nights at the beach. We she got all we got all drunk and getting nasty the night before, but it was a nice day. The moon was out, the ocean does that thing with the the waves, you know, it, it, it hits the beach. And it's, no, you don't. And you go back. <laughs> Crowd to it again. It comes no, you don't. It's like, make up your mind. What are you doing? It, it goes on forever. Have you seen this thing? The ocean? Waves going this way, going right back. I was just smitten by the climate and the moon and the mood. And I thought to myself, I'm going to marry this woman someday. And I got down on my knees. And I whipped out a shoplifted hermit crab. <laughs> and let me tell you, I've never proposed marriage to a woman before, but that look of disappointment that glistened in her eyes, when she knew it was just a shoplifted hermit crab. <laughs> She'd be stuck with some broke 40 fucking one year. How old am I? 41. 41 years. <laughs> I got a it's survival of stealing hermit crabs to live, you know what I mean? You ever been there? I have, yeah. Anyways, it was bejeweled. It had little rhinestones on it. So that counts. Does that count a little bit? It counts. It was a bejeweled hermit crab. I love the Elon Musk name, right? Who just, that was amazing. Oh, my God. I, I felt inspired. I felt like I connected to that because uh, we, we were really fancy names. We had Shelly Duvall was the one hermit crab. Yeah. And have you seen Shelly Duvall these days? Yeah. You can't tell the difference. <laughs> it's like the real Shelly Duvall in your head. <laughs> yeah. Little whiskers going out, paranoid and shit. <laughs> and pinch you. Then you put it in your pocket to bite your nuts again. <laughs> and the other one I named Pokey 3000. <laughs> and we were watching something good on the, the TV, weren't we, honey? It was, uh, it's called The Sinful Dwarf. It's called The Mother, the mo the mother of Dwarf Exploitation Films. <laughs> which is a triple X Swedish 70s horror movie that has unnecessary sex scenes and a midget. <laughs> I'm watching this thing and I forgot that I put Hoagie 3000 on the floor and, and <laughs> Shelly Duvall and the, the one I proposed to her with is it's a loyal one. It sticks around. But there's been this hermit crab a miss for about two days in our apartment. <laughs> Torn it apart twice, I don't know. Uh, the moral of the story is if you propose marriage with a shoplifted hermit crab from Ocean City, Maryland, be good to it. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. Woo! <laughs>